Well, 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 well. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Oh. How are we doing today? Hopefully awesome. we're all doing good. There's Aaron Spears right there. What's happening? What is happening? Hey, man, it's a, it's, it's a lot, and it's, it's nothing at the same time. <laughs> I hear that com completely. Let me, oh, my God, my phone is acting crazy right now. Mm. All right. Well, let me read my little spiel, then we'll get underway here. Absolutely. Everybody, welcome to PIS Presents, uh, a live series created by the Percussive Arts Society. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Eric C. Hughes. I am the uh, Drum Set Committee Chairman, and uh, I'm joined today with uh, uh, an acquaintance who I met a couple years ago at PASIC. Mm -hmm. His name is Aaron Spears. Hopefully, you got to see his clinic back in 2018. Hello, Aaron. How's it going, Eric? Oh, Mr. Spears. What's happening? See, what happens is when uh, when the host goes frozen. Yeah, talk to me. I'm in the background and I could be like, guess who's here to, to take over? <laughs> man, it's good to see you, man. How are you? What happens is when uh, I'm I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Hey, man, I'm good. No complaints. Good. As, as Eric was just saying, thank you, everyone, for joining us. You know, we're in this age right now where you know, technology and we're in our homes and we, we're kind of counting on the Wi-Fi gods. Sometimes it doesn't work out and that's all right because the show must go on, right? Eric will come back soon. Uh, back. But l let's just get started right away. I know, how oh. are you? How are you? How's your family? What have you been doing during, during you know, this last month or so? Well, man, so I'm doing great. I, I can't complain. Um, you know, it's, it's during this time, you know, we're dealing with the whole COVID-19 situation. Um, it's uh, It can be a little bit stressful, you know, just, uh, you know, everything that I had on the books to do uh, this year so far has been shut down. I mean, it's like one thing after another. Uh, clinics, I had clinics scheduled over in, uh, in Europe, in Germany, in Portugal. Those got shut down. I had a couple of really cool events that I was supposed to do with some friends, um, like a couple of drum camps and things like that. That stuff has been shut down. Um, I had a few gigs that I was supposed to do, a couple of touring things. Those things have been shut down. I mean, yeah. so it's like everything right now for me is just uh, it's, it's everything is stopped. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that has remained constant for me is. Um, you know, my family, which has been fantastic, you know, so I've just been spending a lot of time with them. Uh, I tease my wife because she's a teacher and um, God, God bless her. Uh, exactly. Right. You know, right. It's crazy because it's like uh, she still has to teach, you know, pretty much every day, you know, online. Um, so the responsibility of going through lessons and things with with our son is, is on my shoulders, you know, yeah. it's, it's me. So it's like, man, I have to, um, I'm like the principal, you know, and she is like the superintendent. She's above me, you know. Right. So, well, I, I think it's crazy. People, you know, this is the time where people saying, oh, Aaron Spears, you must be doing that. No, Aaron Spears is a dad and has to take <laughs> care of, and has to, and that we were taught, we were just texting back and forth. Oh, um, you know, my daughter is right here, you know, doing, doing her math assignments online right now while we're also, well, she also just corrected me. She's playing Roblox right now. Nice. So, See, right? Mm -hmm. You know? So, um, she doesn't even know. So, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, but we're, yeah, but, and, and we're seeing this across. It doesn't matter what profession you're in, it doesn't matter who you are. Hey. Um, that's happening. Eric C. Hughes is back. Nice. Ridiculous. Right? We were just kind of talking about day to day life right now, Aaron being the drummer, Aaron being the dad. Yeah, so, it's 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 definitely the the new normal right now. It's just you know I'm 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 the the principal, you know, teacher. I'm uh, I'm the part time cook. I am the uh, the dishwasher, the custodian. Uh, I mean, whatever I'll, it takes, whatever yeah. it, whatever it takes, you know, here in in our house to make sure that we're all are good and we're comfortable. Um, you know, just kind of waiting this whole thing out. That's where that's where I am, and that's kind of. All right now. I'm going to let Eric take back over. I'll see you at the end. But Aaron, thanks so much for being here. Appreciate My it. Pleasure, All man. right. Stay pleasure. safe and healthy. Absolutely. You too. Sounds good. Thanks, Joshua. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as we started talking, my power flickered. We're having a storm I'm about ready to roll through here any oh, second wow. now. So it, it was just like, oh, that's there it goes. There goes the internet. So <laughs> well, I'm glad yay, you're back. 
Exactly. <laughs> Glad to be back. Nice. So you're telling us that you're you're kind of chief cook and bottle washer over over at the oh, house. Oh man, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, that I'm the uh, the entertainment coordinator. You know, I'm the the uh, the fort builder. You know, I mean, it's it's this is this is what my gig is right now. Yeah, you know? it's understood. And, yeah, and, it, and, and for it. me, it's like you know, as much as I do, I, man, I enjoy uh, the playing and and touring and and I enjoy that stuff. I enjoy it so much, and I'm so thankful to be able to do that. But like this also is really it's a special time, and I feel really thankful to be able to kind of be in this vibe or in this mode right. Now. Sorry, man. Okay. I'm thankful to be in this time and in this mode right now with you know with my family. So it's cool. yeah. No, that's great. I think a lot of people feel as stressful as the situation is. I think people that do have families are feeling the same exact way. They get a chance to spend a little bit more time and and just kind of like pump the brakes a little bit on the day to day and just enjoy yeah, what's around uh, them. It's, it's a, it's a time to, to recharge, man. It's a time to, you know, reset, you know, and I feel like, you know, this is just kind of where we, where we all have to be right now. I feel like this is something that will help us to kind of reconnect with what's important and hopefully come out on the other side of this um, better, you know? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. That's, that's the hope that we have that's for the plan. For- yeah, for everyone. If we if we all stick to the same plan, we'll be we'll be all right. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk about drums for a second? Come on, man. Let's have it. Let's do it. Um, so, I mean, a lot of us uh, a lot of us know um, who you've played for, mm. and the list is you know quite impressive. That you know Carrie Underwood, Chameleonaire, Usher, of course, Ariana Grande. But let's. I, I used to do oral history interviews for NAM for Percussive Arts Society. So let's take mm-hmm. a step way back okay when did you first know that you wanted to become a drummer what was the uh, was there a one particular moment or was it just kind of something that kind of built up from being around music so i'll tell you for me it i knew that i wanted to be a drummer um when i was a kid you know i was like maybe probably my son's age maybe like five or six um i wanted to i just wanted to play um i didn't think that playing the drums necessarily meant, uh, you know, being a professional musician. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think about it in that aspect. I just knew that I liked the drums. I enjoyed playing. I love the vibe. I love the feel. Um, I really enjoyed being able to play at church um, when, you know, everybody is watching and having the responsibility of making sure the music was what it was supposed to be. That's really all I knew. Yeah. Um, even as I got older, I want to say like, you know, high school, um, you know, I, I still felt like, man, this is something that I love and this is what I'm enjoying doing. But, you know, here in D.C., I had no idea that it was possible to really make a living playing drums because we just D.C. is such a it's a government town. You know, I mean, it's heavy, um, you know, government and politics and it's not necessarily like a, a spot like a Nashville or like mm-hmm. New York or like LA or even like Texas where, you know, they have these crazy um, musical, um, you know, hotspots. You know, it's not necessarily that. We have go-go music here, which go-go is, you know, pretty much it's the sound of the city, but there are select bands that play, you know, weekly, you know, a few times during a week that, um, you know, provide the music for you know for the city but that was pretty much the only career that i that i had saw as far as people being musicians you know playing the drums so i didn't even know that this was a possibility until um i want to say i'm probably was like maybe 20 22 maybe something like that somewhere around there and a couple of my friends had gotten picked up to play for major artists, major R&B artists during that time. Uh-huh. One of my friends was playing with an artist named Genuine. His name is Buggy, Paul Buggy Edwards. And he was playing with uh, with Genuine um, during that time. And then there was another friend of mine, J.J. Williams, who was playing with, um, with Jagged Edge. And these were the first two guys that I personally knew that actually had gotten picked up to play um, with a national national recording artists or even the international recording artists like these were the first guys that i knew so 
seeing them do it, it kind of like sparked something in me to say, man, I, I would like to be able to do this. Like, I hope that I would be able to kind of make the transition from playing here locally um, and playing at church to being able to play like on that level. You know, I had seen other guys from other areas that were very influential to me, like Gerald Hayward uh, was a major influence to see him go from playing in church the way he did to playing on these you know, international stages was extremely encouraging to me. But those two guys, Buggy and JJ, were the first ones that I saw from my city that actually did it. Nice. So, I mean, I know that you you grew up in the church, um, mm -hmm. going with your family, and obviously the music that was there was yeah. seems to be like the, the big, the, probably the big influence. Mm -hmm. But when you were at home, uh, any other family members play, or was there music in the house, like record collections or radio or any kind of that kind of thing? Yeah. So, so for the most part, man, my my parents, like I said, church was just such a big thing for us. Um, you know, growing up, like my parents were you know, just devout Christians, you know, every week we were at church and it was just really important <clears throat> to be there. Um, so the music there at the church was um, something that really kind of, it really pushed me, it really inspired me uh, to be able to play. Um, at home, most of the music that I listened to, you know, as a kid was the stuff that my parents had, you know, the stuff that they would put on, a, you know, the record player or, or cassette tapes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of different artists like the Winans or uh, Commission, you know, these were like um, major, um, like national gospel recording artists, you know, um, Hezekiah Walker, um, you know, these were, you know, re records that I remember listening to as a kid. Um, as I got older, then I was able to get into more stuff like um, Motown, you know, I was able to get into like Stevie Wonder or like uh, Bill Withers, you know, those artists whose message <clears throat> really was, was really positive, but it wasn't necessarily <clears throat> as straight and narrow as the church stuff that my parents, you know, originally would let me listen to, mm -hmm. you know, so it was cool hearing stuff like, you know, James Brown, or it was cool listening to stuff like, um, like I said, like Stevie or Earth, Wind of Fire, like that stuff just, it felt really, really good. And that kind of started to change um well not change but it started to add to um what it was that i was already kind of into and listening to sure i just want to remind folks that are watching if you have any questions go ahead and put them in the uh, comment section we'll grab them but i actually have another question for you aaron is so you said uh, um when you when you were going to school like middle school high school were you involved in any kind of music program through that or yeah i was supposed um, to play in a church yeah so i mean like I said, middle school, high school, I was definitely church heavy. Um, but then, you know, in school, I was also in the marching band. I was also in the concert band. I was also in the jazz band. Um, so it was really cool for me because this was a different way of playing. You know, I had to actually kind of find my place and actually play um, as a part of the percussion section you know what I'm saying, like in concert bands. So I would play either uh, the bass drum or I played um, snare, which was really cool. Um, and that was really, you know, to me, it was different having to read and also understanding how important my specific part is to play with the rest of the band. You know, like it was so important for me to be able to, um, nail my parts because yeah. there's another part of the band that is also counting on what it is that I'm playing, you know? So, um, it was for me, like I said, middle school and high school, you know, the band situation was, was something that I feel helped me out a lot to be able to kind of like take those things and, um, you know, use those right now as, as what it is that I'm, you know, what I'm doing career wise. Yeah. Were well, you taking a, uh, Obviously, you're so you're playing the concert stuff and the marching stuff in school, and at the church you're playing drum set. Mm -hmm. Were you taking lessons at that time with anybody to study the drum set, or were you just kind of like just watching no. the other guys play? And yeah, for me, my my whole uh, like learning experience was really either watching other people play and trying to pick up those things that I would see, um, or listening to other people play. 
And mm -hmm. I feel like it was, you know, those moments that really helped me um, imagination wise, you know what I'm saying? Cause I, I'm listening to the things that they're, that I think that they're doing, you know what I'm saying? Or listen to the things that um, are coming across to me as this is what they're playing, but maybe I'm playing it in a different way. It caused me to really use my imagination to recreate a lot of the things that I heard opposed to like now where we have, you know, cameras and everything set up on everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, you got the foot cam and the overhead cam and you can see specifically, I mean, down to the note exactly what, you know, the person with the player is playing, which is, which is great because I mean, it, it takes the guesswork out of things, but sometimes I feel like it robs people of using their imagination to be able to create and make things, um, you know, what they feel or, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily come directly from them, from their heart. You know, it's right. like, Oh, he played this. Let me play it exactly like, Oh wait. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like, eh, I'm not <laughs> saying it's cheating because it takes ability to be able to do that for sure. But it's just, it's something about when it comes from you, from your heart. It's something that you feel, you know, that's, yeah. to me, that's, that's the magic. I think a lot of older guys like myself, because I'm way old, I think that, you know, like learning a fill off of a record or a cassette and then being like, oh, I think it goes like this. And then you perform it. And it's like, like you just said, it's like, well, it's missing this other one little thing, but then it becomes part of your repertoire. And it's like mm -hmm. a new idea for you. Mm -hmm. And then you can share that when you play it. Yeah, Absolutely. great. Yep, yeah, definitely. Okay, I got two questions here. One, are we going to see you play live today? And the answer is? Nah, I'm not set up to play live. Man, well, let me let me explain to you the reason why. I mean, I do have drums in my in my practice room, which is cool, but the sound is so dude, it's, it's not sweet. If I had it like all mic'd up nice and coming into the camera, like we just but, talked about, you know, then <laughs> then cool, I would be down for that. But nice. I'm a chill. That's okay. That's right. That's fine. We can talk. Don't and the other question me. is, sorry, yeah, no, it's no, no worries, no worries. It's all good. And the other question, uh, it's just from Chira Gupta. He says, "What instrument did you march with the marching band?" Oh, dude. Well, okay. So because I was the like one of the biggest guys in my marching band, I've always been a, a husky kid. Um, I played the bass drum and also played the quads. Cool. Yeah. There we go. When you got out of high school, did you go to college? I did. I went to uh, L.A. Harbor College, which is in uh, San Pedro. I went there for about a year. Um, yeah. And I studied jazz theory there. Um, I didn't stay because, dude, I, honestly, I, I got homesick and I, I decided to come home. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's a junior college there and the, the music program was really cool. Um, I, I met a lot of really cool people and uh, I enjoyed it a lot, but I just felt like there was always something happening at home that I was missing. You know, there was a concert or there was uh gatherings or you know i don't know man it was it just seemed like there was always something so um after about a year then i left i left school and came home i have an aunt that lives in in uh carson california so um i moved out after high school i moved out there to carson to live with my aunt and then i would travel out to san pedro every day to go to school but um i didn't stay for too long yeah, I was wondering if you had any other musical training after you got out of high school, besides obviously performing live and no, that a was musician. no, that was that was pretty much it. Like I said, I was yeah. there for about about a year. Yeah. Can you tell us um, what was? Uh, let's see, how can I ask this? Can you tell us about um, your first experiences working with an artist? Like, was Usher the first kind of big uh, person you really worked for? Yeah. Like, I mean, like big big artists? Yeah, Usher. Usher was the first major artist that I worked for. And um, honestly, man, it was it was really, a, for me, making the transition from um, playing locally um, was to, from locally to, to a national, international person like, like Usher, um, international artist, was scary for me. Because um, I honestly, I didn't know if I had what it took in order to stay there, you know? Um, before me, he, he had a couple of my favorite drummers. He had a guy by the name of, uh, Liddell Abrams. He was there and, um, I really had idolized Liddell from the stuff that he did 
on the gospel scene, and then he made the transition from that to playing with Usher, and he was there with him for for a while, yeah. and then they decided to get rid of him. Um, then they brought in Brian Fraser Moore, who was also someone that I had looked up to and was watching him uh, on that scene and just blown away at the things that he was playing. Um, and then, you know, he ended up leaving. Um, then they brought in Mike Clements, which is another guy that, you know, I, I looked to and was like, you know, this dude is incredible. These are guys that I'm looking to, you know, on my journey, I'm looking at them and I'm just like, holy smokes, like these dudes are, you know, they're incredible. And, you know, they all ended up leaving for whatever reason, you know, either they left, either, either they decided to leave or uh, management decided, wh whatever the reason was, they didn't, you know, they didn't stick around. So for me, here I am, you know, moving into this chair and I honestly just didn't know if this was going to be something that worked out for me. So having the pressure of dealing with, um, you know, having some of my heroes in this seat and trying to um, have, you know, somewhat the same energy or the same vibe that they had, um, but also have my own personality or my own vibe. Um, I was not sure if it was really going to work out, you know, yeah. so um, that in itself was was really nerve wracking, man. Um, just trying to find my way. Um, it's not as easy, I think, as as people think. They think, you know, just because you can play, you just step on the scene and you just gonna you gonna kill it. And I, I don't know if it works like that for everybody, but I know for me with Usher, I was constantly um, second guessing. You know, is this did this work? Was this cool? You know, I'm playing like some of the hottest combinations that I can play. Most the most crazy stuff that I think that. Uh, will make the guys in the band say, oh, that was sick. Oh, dude, you are killing it. Mm -hmm. and their face was just like, yeah, that was, um, you know, like <laughs> there's no, no reaction. So, you know, you, you have a few moments like that, and then you start to really ask, like, hey, man, do I, you know, do I belong here? Am I supposed to be here? And I felt like I definitely had some moments like that um, there with them. Um but it got to a point when I just really felt like, uh, you know, even though they weren't cheering, you know, pat me on the back and saying, dude, you're killing it. Oh, dude, you're incredible. Oh, God, you are the most. They weren't doing that. But they also weren't like telling me that I was trash, you know. So I remember it got to a point one day after rehearsal. I mean, long rehearsal. We we would have rehearsal where we would start like maybe let's say 10 in the morning and do we would go until like maybe 10 at night Ugh. and 12 you know sometimes into the next day one two Jeez, just like these marathon rehearsals we would have and i remember after one of them um us getting back to um where we were staying and i asked the guys in the band um natural who was the guitar player and buddy who was uh, keyboard player, I just straight up asked him, I was like, yo, do do you guys think that I belong here? Like, honestly, like, do you think that I'm a good fit for what's happening? Um, you know, because I'm just asking because I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, I feel like I am, but the energy and the vibe that I'm getting, I'm, I'm just not sure if it's really what it's supposed to be. And they both said to me, like, yeah, you belong here. Like, you definitely, you're one of us for sure but you got to work <laughs> like you got to work hard like you got to make this you got to make it what it's supposed to be like you have to um you got to step make sure you got the music you gotta you gotta work like we've all been here so you gotta work just a little bit harder than um than, than you are working and then from that point on man like i was really busting my tail to make sure that um to make sure that I was doing what it is that I'm supposed to do. Like, and from yeah. that point on, man, like I felt like after having that conversation, the, it, the light just kind of came on and I just, uh, just kind of hunkered down and did what it was that I, I had to do. Yeah. I always think it's great to get validation and also, Hey, by the way, you could also, here Yo. we are. You could also, yeah, it's so, I think it's so important for any musician. 
almost anybody actually, any job, like, hey, you're doing a great job. Let's try this going forward to make it even better. Yeah, they they all those guys, man, they were all on, you know, another level. They had already been touring with Usher, you know, these guys, Valdez, you know, Johnny and Buddy. Um, you know, they had already been in the band with Usher for a few years before I got there. So they already had rapport with each other. They already had rapport with Usher. They already had their energy level was was here. It was high. Like they already knew what it was that they were, um, you know, what it was supposed to be. You know, they they was already in. So me coming in, like being the new guy, like I really had to like kind of find my place. And and it it took having some honest conversation like that with them and being transparent. Um, and then really working hard to make it what it's supposed to be for me to be there with them. Yeah, cool. Um, we're getting some questions over here on the on the side. Are, are, you, are you seeing all this stuff over here? Yeah, yeah, I see. All right, so um, you mentioned some drummers uh, that influenced you, of course, from the gospel side. Yeah. Are there any of the of the other guys, like the pop guys or the rock guys or funk or and metal guys that you look to for inspiration, especially growing up? Yeah, so for me, um, definitely, like, you know, I, I spoke a little bit about the, you know, the, the church guys. <clears throat> but then, you know, as I got older and, like I said, started to listen to, to other genres of music, then it was guys like, um, you know, like Uriel Jones or it was guys, you know, that played Motown or oh yeah, Dabo and Clyde, you know, that played with James Brown. Um, you know, it was those guys like that, you know, or like uh, a David Garbardi that played with, you know, Tower of Power. You know, it was it was these guys that were playing like um, mainstream music that it helped to kind of shape me in, in one way or another. I felt, you know, because I, I was really trying to mimic the things that I would hear uh, them play. Like I, my mom had one of those huge, um, I want to say it was like American Express um, you know, when you get the rewards points, you end up getting, you know, like perks and they send you things, you know, you, there's a book that, that you kind of go through and you select something to say, oh, I want this. So my mom ended up getting like one of those huge component stereos, um, you know, so it had like the record player on top, cassette mm -hmm. player, um, like a, shoot, what was it? Uh, like a six disc CD changer, you know, like that sort of thing. And nice. I, I would always have, um, you know, cassette tapes, put my cassette tapes in and plug up my, like the curly headphone thing that I had. Um, and I would sit and I would play along with the music that I was listening to. Yeah. So it was those guys that were playing on those records, you know, along with the church stuff that really helped to, to kind of shape me. Um, to me, I was later on, I was introduced to, a whole nother way of, of playing um, uh, guys that I consider to be like super drummers, you know, it was guys like uh, Weckl or like Dennis, um, Vinny, um, you know, Alex Acuna, um, you know, DCI at the time, this was before they were Hudson. It was DCI music. Um, mm -hmm. And they had a whole bunch of uh, videotapes and these guys were like, you know, top of the drumming world. Omar King was another one. Um, and I remember these videotapes coming in to my, my local drum store here, which is Chuck Levin's. Um, I would go there, you know, every few weeks to see what they had new. And these guys, they're playing um, totally changed. Um, they, they changed me in a lot of ways because they were playing stuff that I had no idea that, that you could actually play on a kit. Like I, I didn't know, um, you know, that you could have that sort of creativity or musicality. Like, you're not really, back then, you're not really taking open solos in church. Like, they're not going to say, the pastor's going to stop and say, hey, guys, hold on one second. Uh, Aaron, go ahead and give us your best uh, 64 bars right here. Like, it's just, that doesn't happen. You know, you are locked in and you're playing the music and you're, you're the support for what it is that's going on. So when I saw um, Zildjian Day in New York and I see Vinny Caliuta, it blew me away because I had no idea that you could be so funky and so fresh 
but then at the same time be so explosive and creative. You know, I saw Dennis Chambers. I had no idea that you could be so precise and so powerful mm-hmm. and then so fast. You know, I, I, I mean, I've never seen that before. So watching these guys um, and watching these videos, um, you know, videotapes of these dudes, man, like it definitely, um, it inspired me. You know, yeah. it definitely, it, it, ch- it changed a lot of things about my plan for sure. I think I just saw a clip of the Dennis Chambers, maybe with the Buddy Rich yeah. Orchestra Scholarship Concert, and he starts yeah. the song, and he turns to the band and kind of smiles at them like, hang on. Uh, let's kind go. Guys, are so, you ready? It's so great. It's so great. It's so awesome. <laughs> so good. Yeah. yeah. He, and his playing, his, his playing on that track is ridiculous. It's just like, so, why? Why? And, and to me, that was, that was incredible because I had never, you know, seen him play with the big band. Mm-hmm. You know, like I think the first thing that I ever saw him play um, was playing with Parliament Funkadelic, you know, like old videotapes of him playing with Parliament where he's just locked in, playing the groove so heavy. But then he also had percussion stuff on his left hand side. So he's playing like, um, you know, playing the music, but he's he's not missing a beat. You know, I mean, it, everything is just feels so full. It feels so, uh, so dope, you know, but then it's. To see him do that and then, you know, be suited and booted and sit in with the big band and just, ah, oh, he's yeah. driving the band so incredibly. Mm-hmm. That just, that blew me away. I mean, all of them, you know, Vinny, Weckl, um, Greg Bissonette was on there as well, Louis Belson. Yeah. Um, like that whole Burning for Buddy series was, um, was phenomenal. You know, mm-hmm. seeing that and then also catching them watching them uh, trade, you know, was just fantastic. Also, um, it was another, the other, the, the first one was with uh, Dennis, Greg B. Sinet, Louis Belson. I think the second one was with um, Vinny Caliuta, Dave Weckl, and Steve Gadd was in there. Yeah. Yeah. It was, whew, yeah. Incredible. And then yeah. the, the last one I, I want to say that I saw was with um, Marvin Smitty Smith and Steve Smith, and that was killing. I mean, it's just like being able to see these these musicians um, do what they do, but in these other elements, man, was just fantastic. Yeah, inspiring. Very much. Uh, so. Yeah, Audrey uh, Simons, who's Joshua Simons, our fearless leader, the executive director hey. of the Progressive Arts Society. She wants to know. Do you play with on Ariana Grande's records, or do you just play with her live? Man, I just play with her live. Well, you know what's crazy is um, so the way that it normally works is this: a lot of times, the you know when you have um, an artist like Ariana, she works with uh, with you know different producers, and the producers that she works with, um, they kind of already have in place musically the things that they want to come across for these records, you know, so. With Ari, you know what she's working with, like um, like Tommy Brown is like one of her favorite producers right now that she's working with, who's helped to create some incredible music with, like the whole Seven Rings record. Uh, when, I, don't, I don't know, I can't say the whole record, but most of the songs on Seven Rings, Ariana and Tommy had created together. They worked on that stuff together, so he's one of her favorite producers. But musically, um, it's not live drums. You know, right. really what's happening is, you know, the drums are um, the computer drums, you know, so whatever system it is that he's using, uh, whether it's, you know, Logic or Pro Tools or, you know, if he's using his MPC, whatever it is, he's creating those sounds himself. So for me, I'm only playing on like the live stuff. Now, Ariana did release a live record um, at the end of last year, and I am planning on that. But there we go. Perfect. I did not play on like the uh, the studio albums. Nice. Uh, there's a question here that we kind of uh, Lucy Ritter wrote and that we already talked about. And actually, part of her question was something I was going to ask you when we talked about um, joining up with um, Usher. Um, before you joined him, obviously you played with other people. Um, what are some uh, what what's some advice you can give someone that maybe wants to make that kind of tiered approach to Playing from you know playing from hometown like in bars to regional touring to 
you know, U.S. wide touring to finding an artist that's maybe uh, maybe a big time artist. I mean, what lessons have you learned that you can share with us as far as like how to behave, how to act? Well, I would say, man, the the first the first thing is, um, I think networking is really important. You know, so I think that it's important to network. You know, one at your your local level. You know, whoever it is that's kind of making the music happen on your local scene, whether it's bars or clubs or uh, church or um, whatever it is, I feel like it's important to kind of know the people that are are doing the things there. Um, and and you know, sincerely and honestly express to them uh, your interest in actually working with them, and you know, to make some music and make some things happen. Um, I think it kind of starts there. Yeah. Uh, you never know um, kind of what things may happen or transpire from uh, your local connection. Because, like, for, for me, you know, for me, what, what ended up happening, getting a gig with Usher, like, I spoke about my friends that were doing um, a couple of things here in the area. Like, they made the transition from local to national. Um it was my friend that introduced me to a Gerald Hayward and Gerald was the guy that inter, inter, he ended up introducing me to Usher's musical director, you know? Sure. So, um, like I said, it starts with your local connections. You know, you start there. Um, you definitely want to be a person that is, uh, easily approachable. You want to be a person whose vibe is cool. You definitely want to be a person that, people will want to be around. I think one of the biggest things that kind of happens is uh, nowadays we see so many people that are incredible musicians and they're great players, um, but they're not working because people don't want to be around them. Like they don't enjoy um, the other side that comes along with it. Like your playing is really out of the day. Uh, I mean, you, you may play for a couple hours out the day. And then you still have another 22 hours, uh, you know, to, to kind of deal with and be around people. So, uh, I mean, of course, you, you're going to go to bed at some point. So maybe not 22, but but you understand what I'm saying. Like you definitely want to be able to be cool with people and you want people to have um, just a favorable or pleasurable experience to be able to kind of like um, just work with you. Yeah. So um, like I said, start at the local level. Um, be cool with people. Uh, I'm not saying you have to kiss anybody's butt or nothing like that, but you just want to be able to be, be positive, you know, stay positive, you know, and, and from that, man, you just, you never know what will happen or how the doors can open up for you. You know, I, I, for me, I really, you know, I believe that things happen for me because of my trust and my faith in God. You know, and I know that everybody believes something different and that's cool. But for me, I just feel like the doors opened up in a supernatural way that I cannot explain. You know, what I'm saying? my plan is cool. Uh, my plan is all right. You know, OK, yeah, it's, it's cool. You know? But I feel like, you know, things really opened up, you know, in a way that I can't necessarily explain because there's so many people who's playing is cool. There's there's so many people that's playing is is fantastic, uh, you know, on my level, or it's even better than me, you know. So, uh, I'm just, you know, this is this is just what I feel, you know. I feel like it's important to network. It's important to be cool, and I think it's important to be patient. Mm -hmm. You know, wait for the the opportunity to come. It, it'll it'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah, that's all great advice. It's like, can he play? Can he or she play? Yep. Can they hang? Then it becomes like not everybody can hang. Exactly. Not exactly. everybody. Not everybody can hang. And I'm not saying you know you got to be you know the life of the party. You got to be wilding out and going crazy. It's not even about that. You're nah, exactly right. it's just can can you be can you be cool? You know, can you sit with these people? Cool. Can you sit with these people? Okay, cool. Sometimes you got to be a chameleon to be able to to rock with everybody. You yeah. know. You got to be able to make people feel comfortable. You don't want people to be on edge, you know, while it's just not about that, you know. Speaking of cool people, Gary Ingrafia says hello. So hey, there he is. Gary, what's happening? 
All right. How are we doing on time? How are you doing on time, Aaron? You doing okay? Oh, I, I got a few more minutes. My son is going to bust in here any minute saying, Daddy, we need to save this mission on Lego uh, Incredibles or something. I know it's going to happen. Let's take let's take a few more questions. David Segal, who's a good buddy of mine, is asking about your warm up routine. We got Ch uh, Chirag is asking about um, should drummers know computer and software. Kim, my buddy Kim Brower is asking if you still take lessons. And Jade wants to know where you draw your inspiration from. You can answer any or none of those if you want to. Ooh, I'll answer none of them. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my warm up routine uh, when I'm actually on the gig. Um, dude, I don't warm up like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like everybody is different. You know, uh, some people, they, they take a lot of time to, you know, maybe, you know, 10, 15 minutes, half an hour, excuse me, where they'll warm up before they play. For me, my warm up will be the first song. I just feel like that is the warm up for me. I'm, I'm warming up mostly kind of in my head and just kind of like, uh, relaxing and, and kind of just kind of chilling or kind of getting in my zone, I would say. Um, and that's kind of what my warm up is, you know, I'm just kind of what's, what's an average length show for you? A couple hours, two hours. I would say, about two, yeah, now it's, it's about two hours, definitely hour, hour and 45 minutes. I'd say that's probably the average. Sure. Okay. Scott, uh, Scott <laughs> Atkins. That's my guy. Matt Griner. What Matt Griner is on too. How about that? Ooh, fancy. Um, how about um, do you think it's important for today's pro drummer to know music software and computer skills? I do. I think I think that that's important because it it helps. Um, I think it it helps to add another element to your playing. You know, um, for me, like software wise, that's something that I personally have to I have to get better at. You know, and during this time where we're all here in the house and we're all chilling, that's something that I'm working on right now. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Anything outside of like the electronics that I use, like, you know, triggers and my pads and stuff like that. Um, I've got that stuff down. But like when it comes to, uh, you know, software, like let's say like like Pro Tools, I'm not your guy. Fair enough. Yeah, there's always a uh, there's always been a guy for me that that does that. You know, uh, thanks to social distancing, that guy's not here. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not it's not happening. So I have to get into these things on my own in order to to make myself even better. And that's that's what what I'm kind of working on during this time. And it's just kind of improving and upgrading myself. Let's take one more question, and then I'll, I'll, we can wrap this up. Um, well, maybe two questions. Do you still take lessons? Um, not so much. Uh, no, nah, I don't take lessons now. I, I, not formal lessons. Let me not. Let me say that. Like, I'm not sitting down with a teacher where we are. You know, he's giving me things to do and exercise and stuff like that. Not like that. But I do take lessons in the form of um, like sitting with some of my friends. You know, like I have a lot of friends that play. Um, and a lot of times we'll sit down and we may have a practice session together or we may share it together. And it's in these moments, these practice sessions or these sheds that we, you know, the time that we would take to, to sit together where I'm learning a lot about them and the way that they uh, kind of like uh, express themselves or the way that they would play or, or their voicings or their vocabulary. But I'm also learning a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. And things either that I do, um, or things that I that I don't do, or things that I need to work on, or things that I need to do better. So I mean, I, I'm I'm always up for for moments like that, man, where I'm just trying to get better, trying to grow. When we get free of this thing, and you travel, and you get out to Ventura, go see Kim at uh, Pulse Percussion. She'll she'll set you up with all oh. kinds of crazy stuff. So oh, that's cool. She, like she's that. she, she's a good buddy, so she just chimed in. Oh, hey, what up, Kim? Hey, lastly. Um, where do you draw your inspiration from? Uh man, for me, it music, real music, two places. I say music and life, man. Like I'm really just um there's so much more, you know, to to this whole music thing than just music. I feel like 
you know, the people that it's just constantly, it's nothing but music. This is all I, do. I listen to, I play, I eat, I drink, I sleep music. This is cool. Uh, if that's <laughs> what works for you. But for me, I draw inspiration from, from music, but also just from life. You know, like I'm really thankful to be able to um, have my family. You know, I'm really thankful to be able to have my home. I'm thankful for my cars. I'm thankful for, um, you know, the things that music has helped me and afforded me to live this life that I live. Mm -hmm. But it's like my family, you know, my son, my wife, those things, you know, seeing them or spending time with them also help to give me inspiration for when I play. Sometimes I play and I'm really thinking about them. Like, I'm like, yo, you know, hopefully the things that I'm doing, hopefully is making them proud. You know, it's, it's, it's funny. My son came to check out Ariana uh, when we played in D.C. And, you know, I'm watching him, you know, as, you know, the songs and stuff are going on. And I could see the excitement on his face when, you know, he's looking at me like, that ain't. He's trying to get yeah. my and he's waving at me. And I could tell, you know, in those moments, you know, it's making him proud. Those things inspire me. You know, yeah. of course, I love to hear cats play. I love to hear music. I love to hear um, live music, you know, and those things inspire me as well. But it's not just that for me. Like, it's it's just the everyday things that I'm able to experience, you know, that I feel really, really fortunate to, you know, it's those things that inspire me. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, Aaron, I want to say thank you so much for joining us, joining Percussive Art Society today and sharing your thoughts, man. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah. It's been great to be here, man. I'm extremely thankful for you guys and all that you do for our drummer community, man. And I look forward to us connecting again. Fantastic. I got a spiel here. If you want to hang, you can. If you want to bolt, you Go can. Go for it. Well. I'll be right here. All right. I got to read this thing. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. The Percussive Art Society's PAS Presents. If looking for more resources, make sure to join rejoin or renew your PAS memberships. That's a very important right now. Do it guys. As a percussion community, it's vital that we continue to support PAS. Now during this time, we do have a lot of our resources are available and the most current issue of percussive notes, which is the tribute to Neil Peart is available online at PAS.org. Uh, if it's not on the front page, it should be under resources. I want to thank Amber Fox for putting this together. Thank you to all the viewers. Thank you guys for your questions. A lot of great questions, a lot of nice people on here, a lot of friends showing up today, which is great. Thank you to Joshua Simons, our executive director for the brainchild of all of this. Aaron knows him very well. Gosh, the great. And lastly, PAS.org. We hope to see you guys in the fall. Until then, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Aaron, my brother, it's so great to see you again, even if Pleasure. on the internet. Pleasure, man. Pleasure. I look forward to when we connect next time. Sounds great. All right. You take care. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye, everybody.